Uh, welcome to uh, the first uh, uh, OAuth interim meeting. Uh, so this is the not well. Uh, make sure uh, you understand what this means. This applies here too. Um, so quick update. Um, so that uh, the JOT response uh, for token introspection document, this is the document that we pulled back to the working group and um, we had to get feedback from the working group on the recent changes because of IESG feedback. So we've, we've done that. It seems that the work group is, is, uh, is okay with the changes and we are, um, uh, and, and uh, we sent it back so to, to the ISG. So I think we're, we're good with this. So, so that's one. Uh, the second one is OAuth 2.1 is now a working group document. We, we went through um, an adoption process for two weeks and, and lots of uh, support for the document, no uh, objection. So uh, it's a, a new work group document right now. Uh, the uh, job profile for access token is waiting for the ship write up. Uh, so it's a uh, harness, it should be working on this uh, soon. Uh, and the jar document um, was updated recently to address some ISG uh, concerns uh, that was raised uh, during ISG review. Um, I, I, we hope that this addresses um, uh, that, that current discuss and, and will allow us to move this. It, it's been hanging in there for, for some time. <laughs> so, so, Go ahead. so Rafa, this is Roman. If I could jump in on the IESG documents, would that be okay? Yep. Yeah, yeah, so absolutely. just with, with regards to the first one, yes, that's in my queue. I'm going to squint at it quickly. I expect that to go relatively easily, given that we've been through this once before, and I'll bring it back to the IESG. As to the last document, that's on next week's telechat. Awesome. Awesome. Good. Thank you. Thanks for the update, Roman. Appreciate it. Any, any question about those? Okay. Let's move on then. So um, today we'll be talking about OAuth 2.1. Uh, next week we'll be talking about PAR. Now we still have a, a, a bunch of other working group documents and I was wondering if uh, if people have made some progress on, on those documents and we need to discuss those. So uh, any of the authors of these documents want to um, present any of those documents, let me know. Um, and we will schedule meetings for those. Any, any, anybody would like that, any one of the authors would, would like to present any of those documents? Okay. Uh, so, Hi, this is Justin. Um, there's been some discussion on um, clarifications to RAR, um, and those have not yet been sort of fully folded into the document yet. There's a, there's a pull request with some discussion on it. Um, I think it might be a good idea to have, uh, have an update on RAR in a bit. I don't see Torsten on the call today, um, so I, I definitely would want to coordinate with him. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I, I think we should do one on RAR in the future. Okay. Thanks, Justin. Um, anybody else? So, yeah, this is Aaron. Yeah, go ahead, Aaron. Um, so we had a lot of good discussions about the browser-based apps draft during the security workshop, um, a couple weeks ago. So, uh, I'm not quite ready to, to, uh, do an update on that here, but probably soon. Um, okay. Uh, yes, yeah, so we, have, we have, I can give some of those discussions and sort of where we're, where we're at with those. Yeah, and the goal is just to schedule a few interim meetings to discuss those, right? It, I'm not talking about yeah, providing yeah. any feedback right now, right? So that, that's the point. Was there any progress with Depop? Any, anything there? Okay. Um, and security topics, I don't see Torsten here. Okay, that's fine. I'll I'll, I'll contact people uh, offline and see what's uh, what's going on there with the, those three topics. Okay, 
Uh, that's all I have uh, from my side. Go ahead. Somebody wants to jump in. Okay. So that's all uh, all I have on my side. I'll hand it to Aaron, and we'll uh, talk about two dot one. Bye, Aaron. All right. So yeah, I just want to give a update on where we're at with OAuth two dot one, and um, talk about uh, I guess next steps. So this was um, recently adopted, uh, I think, last week. So it is now a working group document, and we're back to version 00. Um, there were no actual changes between the last document that everybody saw and this version. So there's no, um, don't worry if you haven't actually read this version yet, because it's not any different than the last uh, individual draft. So um, if you're not familiar with the document though at all, the idea in OAuth 2.1 is to consolidate the sort of best practices and uh, current state of the art of OAuth 2 um, and roll those up into a new document updating the core RFC, um, doing things like capturing the best practices as is documented in a handful of other drafts that have been published since the original RFC, as well as now um, in the original OAuth 2 RFC, there were a lot of things that were left um, undefined or future extension points that now do have uh, extensions at various levels of stability. So it's worth now referencing those when appropriate so that they are now discoverable from the core. Um, this is mainly, again, um, an effort to sort of update the core document. This is not meant to be a new thing. This is not supposed to be new functionality. Um, so rather than trying to shove in every new feature that everybody you know, can think of, we're trying to really just treat it as um, a, you know, updating from the original um, 6749 to you know, playing all the, all the documents in order that have been written since then that are RFCs and consolidating that into a new document. Really just giving people a better starting point for uh, when they start to read about OAuth they're not starting with 10 year old out of date information and trying to catch up. They can now start from a much more up to date modern place. So the summary of what's in the document, um, it's essentially a consolidation of, um, whoever is making a lot of noise, can you please mute? I'm not sure who that is, I can't see. Um, someone's making breathing noises and dishes, thanks. Um, so OAuth 2.1 is consolidating 6749, the core, uh, the native apps, best current practice, rolling in Pixie support as well. Um, there's a placeholder for the browser-based apps, best current practice, because that's not yet an RFC, but it will eventually roll that in as well. And the security best current practice um, as well is rolled up into there and uh, bearer tokens as well. So the idea is that this is sort of what most people would look at and say, yes, this is the current best way to do OAuth 2. So if you look at all those documents, what that means is the um, authorization code flow is the is the only redirect based flow and it includes the Pixie mechanism by default. Um, there is, however, one exception carved out for specifically clients that are use OpenID Connect clients that um, are using the nonce to prevent authorization code injection. There is a carve out for that just so that these, uh, this draft does not break, you know, quote unquote, break OpenID Connect clients. Um, however, it is still highly recommended that Pixie is used because it is a safer way to prevent all those attacks. Um, the only other grant type defined is the client credentials grant type, which is of course the uh, grant type that does not involve a end user in front of a of a computer. Um, there's a handful of other requirements that are essentially in the security best current practice and the other ECPs, uh, things like requiring exact redirect URL matching to drop any wildcard matching. Um, don't uh, so dropping query string usage of bearer tokens, um, 
there's some additional requirements around refresh tokens, which again are from the security DCP. Um, and probably most significantly, the two grant types from the core are no longer here, which are the implicit and password grants. And um, these are, again, not, this is not anything that OAuth 2.1 is deciding. This is based on the security best current practice also saying to not use those, those grants in OAuth 2. Um, so, one of the other big changes in OAuth 2.1 is in a, I shouldn't say changes, um, but there's a new term introduced in OAuth 2.1, which is called a credentialed client. So, OAuth 2 defines public and confidential clients, and then throughout the document, there is a uh, sprinkling of exceptions to these definitions used with throughout the document. So um, the idea is that we're going to actually give those exceptions a name and that's credentialed. So a credential client is a client that has credentials but whose identity is not confirmed. So for example, probably the most straightforward way to imagine this is a client that uses dynamic client registration and then gets a client secret through that dynamic client registration. Um, and specifically where the dynamic client registration was not authenticated itself. So if you imagine a mobile app shipped in the Apple App Store, it obviously cannot be shipped with the client secret included. So the first thing you could do when it wakes up is use dynamic client registration to get a client secret. However, that API call to the registration endpoint is an unauthenticated API call. So its identity isn't actually confirmed. And yet it has a client secret, which it still can use in many ways that are mentioned in the draft uh, to you know, prevent certain attacks. So this is that sort of halfway between public client and confidential client. It's not a confidential client because it doesn't have, it's not, um, its identity is not confirmed, but it's not quite a public client because public client has other implications. Um, anyway, this is mainly just to say that um, this distinction has existed in OAuth 2 from the beginning. And um, it looks like I, I lost my slide. It has a quote uh, showing the differences in the specs between by being able to use this term. Um, essentially, it just sort of cleans up the terminology in, it cleans up the language in the spec um, to be a little bit less dancing around like, oh, if it's if it's confidential client, or if it also happens to have a client secret, but it's not confidential, um, now we can just call it a credentialed client. Um, so the, uh, what's next for this, there's still some editorial cleanup that needs to happen. I'm sure, um, there's a lot of copy editing to do. I think it's a good idea to also take this opportunity to clean up the, um, the language used in the draft and, you know, look for anything that is anything in OAuth 2 that was not necessarily clear. And we have a chance to update it now to make it easier to read. Um, I do need to add examples of credentialed clients because the other client types already have examples in here. So that's been one of the pieces of feedback we've received is people don't quite understand credentialed client just reading this short description. Um, and of course, yeah, getting feedback from the group. So that is um, what we are here to do right now. Um, so that is the status and I'm happy to uh, open it up for questions or uh, questions. Yeah, uh, if, if you have any comments, questions, please uh, line up uh, on the chat there. And please, if you are not speaking, please mute your microphone. Yes, please do that. Uh, Mike, go ahead. Yes, uh, reaching back a decade, there was a change made in in 49 during Auth 48, where Dick and I didn't understand some language that Aaron had written, and we got it wrong. There was an error filed, um, correcting the meanings to what um, Aaron had intended. Um, I would look up the errata on 6749 and get that fix in. I mean, that was by no means the only piece of ambiguous language, but that one was so bad 
Dick and I didn't understand it as we were doing Auth 48. Okay. Great, thanks. I think okay. I've found that now. Okay, Roman, go ahead. Just riffing off of exactly what what Mike was talking about, I haven't checked yet, but I mean, this seems like a good opportunity to 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 address any of the errata we may have outstanding on the reference documents that are going to be pulled in. Yeah, yeah, I think it's, it's a good idea. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Uh, might be a short meeting then. So, uh, <laughs> so if if no if no nobody has any comments right now, can we get some volunteers to read the document and provide feedback? We we just don't want to leave it wide open and wait for for uh, for people. Any 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 volunteers? Go ahead, Justin. Or sorry. Vittorio. Uh, Vittorio is first, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Vittorio. All right, sorry. Just two, two things. One was that uh, we had a discussion about the must for the uh, sender constraint for uh, um, refresh tokens. And I think that uh, the conclusion was that uh, we wanted must just for single page apps, but that for mobile apps, uh, uh, native apps, we were okay, we should. Adam? Not sure how I got muted there, sorry. Um, I believe that matches my memory as well. Do you remember where that discussion was? Was that, was that at the security workshop? Uh, no, we had uh, a thread with, uh, um, with uh, uh, Thorsten and uh, um, Brian Campbell. Ah, got it, yes, I remember that now. Because uh, like we had uh, like we made this statement at the last time that we had these interim meetings, and then you guys followed up uh, for uh, knowing more details. So it was one. And then I have another one, but uh, I let Justin go, and I put myself again in queue for the next one. Okay, go ahead, Justin. Uh, yeah, so I'd like to see more discussion in this. Um, well, one, I I'm I'll volunteer to review the spec text. Uh, I've I've read through it, but not deeply enough to uh, have a full set of comment yet. Um, awesome, thanks. And granted, this is the dash zero zero, so you know we, we've got a ways to go yet. Um, I would like to see more uh, discussion in this with, about non-bearer token types. I know uh, Depop is still very, very young, but we at least have the MTLS RFC, uh, which seems to be mentioned only in passing on or in context of client authentication in the current draft. Um, I would like to see that. Um, the, uh, and the notion of sender constraining access tokens to be brought more to a light here. Um, and the other main comment I have, I mean, overall, I think this is, this is good work. Um, but the other main comment I have is that there seems to be a lot of leaning on um, on OpenID Connect, um, and I think we just need to be careful that this doesn't um, step accidentally step into OpenID territory. Uh, I don't think it quite does, but it gets close in some in some places. Um, so it's just something that. Uh, I'll be on the lookout for in my review, and I request the editors um, keep an eye towards that um, going uh, going forward. Hey, yeah, that's no, that's a, that's a great point. Can I uh, ask if there was a particular instance that you are referencing, or just sort of general comment? There was, but I can't find it now. I've got the document up in the back. Okay. I was, I was, I noticed it as I read through. Um, and I'm the, finding it. The Get one started. reference that is actually normative is the exception 
that allows OpenID Connect clients to not use Pixie. That was that might have been quite it. a bit of discussion that got yeah. that got into that. But we've yeah. tried to reword that in this draft compared to some of the earlier iterations of it to make it very specific that this is not trying to say you should be doing open open ID connect things. It's saying if you are doing open ID connect things, then you don't need to do Pixie. Right. Now I remember that discussion on the list and I'm trying to find it in the documents. Uh, yeah, I'm 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 fine with the reference to uh, I'm fine with the reference to the nonce thing uh, being included here. Uh, I, yeah, unfortunately, just scanning through the document uh, in the background right now, I can't find the line. But um, still, the general um, the general sentiment uh, and suggestion still applies. Yeah. So I'll uh, right. keep that in mind. All right, thank you. I'll I'll let you know if if I find that again. I may have also just misread or misunderstood something because the the places that I'm reading that say Open ID don't don't seem to be a problem right now. So we'll see. Okay, Vittorio. Th thanks, Justin. Vittorio. All right. So I'm a bit reluctant to bring this up again because, but given that there is not a huge uh, queue, I think that uh, I'm not uh, stealing uh, anyone's time. Um, some time ago, we had a discussion about the fact that uh, uh, the deprecation of the implicit flow uh, has uh, implications on some uh, of the OpenID Connect flows. In particular, I'm thinking of a case in which there is uh, a response type ID token and the response mode is a uh, form post which is a scenario which doesn't have uh, any of the drawbacks that we have uh, and the reason for which uh, uh, implicit was deprecated. And the problem I'm having is that, uh, as I predicted, uh, whenever people see that flow, they say, okay, that flow is going to go away anyway because implicit is deprecated, which instead isn't the case. Let's say that uh, uh, that particular deprecation is uh, for all the various considerations we had about uh, having a token in the referral header or like uh, all the various issues that we have uh, in uh, uh, tokens in the URL in general. So I don't know if it's the place uh, in this spec to make a clarification in there that that particular way of uh, issuing tokens from the authorization endpoint is uh, not affected by the various security reasons that made us deprecate. And, uh, I bring this up again. I know that we already discussed this and uh, we got to a, a position in which uh, we were okay, but unfortunately it doesn't seem to have worked. Let's say that people do keep getting this wrong. And uh, I bring this up because uh, given that in the nonce, we actually called out uh, a particular scenario that uh, occurs in OpenID. I'm wondering if there is something that we can do in here to preempt and clarify that point so that I don't have to spend uh, the next five years, every time someone says, ah, here, implicit is deprecated, to explain that uh, that deprecation doesn't really affect the form of post. Okay. That uh, makes sense. Can I um, go ahead. just clarify one, one thing real quick before we get to the queue? Um, so while effectively this means the implicit flow is deprecated, What's actually happening in this draft is that it's not being defined, which is different. So the security BCP actually says things like don't use the password grant. It's just not in this draft. So uh, well, I totally get your point. Um, there isn't anything in this draft that actually says it's deprecated. Um, so that is that that sentiment is coming from sort of the you know outside of the spec, the things that we're talking about external to the spec. Um, so I just wanted to clarify that, but let's go ahead and go to the queue. Yeah, thanks, Aaron. So um, I know uh, Tony has a comment here, but Justin and, and Mike, did you jump into the mic to to reply to Vittorio or, or discuss that topic or, or what? Like, or is something completely different? I wanted well, I did. Sorry, go ahead, Mike. So Sorry, Justin, you, you were first. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, OK. Sorry, I didn't realize. Um, I didn't get in line to respond to Vittorio, but I would like to. Okay. <laughs> so if, if that, like, 
go ahead I, I just, because okay. don't have uh, different comments i don't want to uh, right it. yeah go okay, ahead that's that's fine i will i'll do my response to vittorio and then put me back in the mic line after uh, okay uh so yeah um i i totally get understanding um the, the whole notion of just not mentioning implicit and password and things like that in here in the definitions from the perspective of developer though i think vittorio has got a really good point that people are going to look at this document and see that this is one of the things that is you know potentially extensible uh defining new grant types and therefore wonder kind of okay so this is defined here does that what does that mean about using it and stuff like that so I think a um, a discussion maybe in section 12 that gets more into it. Um, uh, I, it we mention it um, that it's omitted, but we, we don't and we have the reference to security topics, which is which is good. But I think a little bit more about, you know, maybe to Vittorio's point of the implicit grant on its own or something, I'm not sure how to phrase that, uh, would be helpful here. Okay. I, I do agree with with the uh, the editor's take of um, omitting its definition and not defining it and then saying don't use it. Okay. Mike, uh, is you, are you following up on that? Yeah, I want to support Vittorio's notion that we should find a way, and I don't know if it's in this draft. Call. To, Sorry, guys, go, go mute if you're not speaking. Please. Go ahead, Mike. Um, I wanted to support Vittorio. The working group should find a way to say that implicit with form post is not dangerous in the way it is. Um, I don't know if that's in this draft or uh in a blog post we make or something but i agree that developers are being caused confusion about uh implicit with form post being in the same category as implicit in the fragment not at all the same yeah uh, so i don't know what we want to do but we need to do something yeah, I don't think a blog post would address this, right? It will get lost. So we need, it seems that we need to do something about this in, in, the, in the draft. So, um, so I would, um, can I respond but, to these couple a couple things? Um, I think uh, I think Justin's point is good that there could be some more discussion of this. And I think one of the things that could be clarified in this without stepping too far into either O'Brandy Connect or redefining implicit is that um, also as a guidance for future extensions is that the actual problem with the implicit flow is that the access tokens are issued from the authorization endpoint rather than the token endpoint. And that's that then doesn't discount response type ID token because that's not an access token, right? So if, if OAuth actually makes a statement that says don't issue access tokens from the authorization endpoint, then that's the thing that that's the goal there would be to clarify that that's the reason the implicit flow is being emitted is that the implicit flows access tokens come from the authorization endpoint. And maybe that's a way to make it more clear that response type ID token with whatever response modes are totally, you know, a different issue because they're not access tokens that don't have the same uh, threat model. Okay. Uh, Dick, do you have a comment about the same topic? Yeah. Okay, I just go ahead. wanted to float out the idea of rather than having um, normative language to go and describe these things in security considerations, to sort of describe what the risks are and when there isn't risk, so that people understand when they could use it with and not use it, but not have it as normative language. Like that. Okay, Mike. Yeah. Um. To Aaron's comments, 
Yeah, response type equals ID token matters, but the one that we're really talking about is ID token token, where there is a access token issued from the authorization endpoint, but we use form post, it's put in the body, it's not put in the fragment. And so the ways that you can steal it when it's in the fragment and in the URL in particular don't apply. That's true, but you still have the problem of lack of confirmation that it's been received by the client. What do you mean? I mean, the authorization server has no guarantee that the client actually got the access token, whereas giving it in response to a uh, post request from at the token endpoint, the delivery is in the response to that request. So it is a confirmed delivery. Um, you can tell that it was delivered if it's later used. I'm not sure what you're trying to get at. Right, but it's used at the resource server, not at the authorization server. So the authorization server can't guarantee it was received. Only the resource server can later tell the authorization server that it was successful because it showed up. I don't see that as being a security issue. That's an end to end completion issue, but that's not a security issue. It's it, that's a that's an interesting distinction. I see it as a security issue because the um, the lack of confirmation of of delivery. If you if you can confirm it was delivered to the right client, then there's higher assurance overall in like the policies of that token or the lifetime of it or the lifetime of chain you know tokens. Uh, around it, like the refresh tokens or other access tokens. If you can't confirm it was received, you don't get that assurance and you can't make the same decisions because you're working with less information. Sure, but again, this doesn't facilitate an attack. We can take this on list if you want, but the, the high order bit here is I support Vittorio's point, and maybe you can put this on list. Yeah that we need to make an affirmative statement that implicit with form post does not have the same security problems as implicit. We do not in the marketplace want to get people to stop doing things that are actually working well and okay. Okay, thanks, thanks Mike. Uh, Justin? Yeah, so uh, this is actually taking a, a step back from the, the specifics of this uh, of this issue and something that the document doesn't quite tackle yet that I think it really needs to um, is the notion of what compatibility means here for OAuth 2.1. Do we expect an OAuth 2.1 client to be able to talk to a 2.0 server? Do we expect a uh, 2.0 client to be able to talk to a 2.1 server or under which circumstances? Obviously, OAuth does not guarantee compatibility between OAuth 2.0 and OAuth 2.0. So we're already constrained by that space. But, uh, you know, in a very real sense, um, and this gets back to some of the, the questions that Vittorio and Mike are raising here, um, I think we need to be clearer about what we mean by the additional constraints in 2.1. Are we guiding people towards better auth servers or better clients or both? And what does that mean when talking to legacy systems? Um, the bit of text, and I and I understand that this is um, uh, that this is imported from the Pixie draft, but the bit of text that really makes me uh, really brings this up is in section 4112, uh, the discussion of the plane transformation. Uh, I remember when we uh, decided to keep that in the Pixie document uh, because Google had already done that and then somebody came up 
with a much better way, much more secure way to do it. Um, so, you know, in addition to having Pixie, could we, is, would it be reasonable to deprecate this also or to reevaluate what compatibility with, for example, Pixie means here? Uh, the card is note taker. Justin, what were you comparing the, the Pixie to? What was the, the feature? Oh, it's the plain um, transformation for the code challenge. Thank you. That's an interesting uh, point, Justin. My, I guess my my editor response is: Have there been any? studies on or any research on uh, you know attacks using the plain code transformation and are they documented in the security BCP um, because if this document's going to leave it out then it should have already been left out taken out by another document that predates this one right so the security BCP is the obvious place for that where that's where a lot of these similar, restrictions are coming from, um, similar constraints. And if it's not a good idea to use this anymore, we should make that clear in the security BCP that it's also not okay for OAuth2 clients to be using it. Okay, um, that's reasonable. I, I The specifics of Pixie aside, um, I do think that we need to have more explicit discussion about what uh, compatibility means, uh, or even what the aim is between 2.1 and 2.0. This has been brought up on the list a couple of times, and uh, back when we could all sit in the same room together, uh, I remember this was uh, this was another uh, very real topic of conversation. Justin, it's Dick Hart here. Uh, just maybe you can drive more clarification on that. I mean, we were trying to frame 2.1 as being the best practices of OOP 2.0 and the combination of all existing documents. So it's compatible with what's out there today. It's just put together in one document. What What are you suggesting we change? Or, or do you think that it isn't compatible in some way? Oh, it's not compatible because it um, it says don't use the implicit flow. It says uh, or it doesn't say how to use the implicit flow. There, there's a bunch of things that are defined um, and you can do in the world of OAuth 2.0 that we now our best practices documents say don't do. But that makes people who are implementing just raw OAuth 2.0 strictly incompatible with OAuth 2.1, which includes all the best practices that say don't do the bad things. Right. So my statement think... was that the world today is that you you know here's what you should do, right? And so I, that, I understand. that has changed what 2.0. You shouldn't you shouldn't just implement 2.0. You should implement 2.0 with best practices, which is what 2.1 is. Can we just call that out more. I think that needs to be more explicitly defined because I think it's going to get towards some of the um, concerns that Vittorio and Mike have raised needs to be confusion about the nature of the document and deprecation of elements. I think Aaron was trying to break there. Yeah, there's a section in the draft uh, called differences from OAuth 2 and it sort of goes through these major differences and I think that you're right, that it needs a little bit more context about that. And I, I, I don't think it's, uh, I, I do think the goals that we're coming at are correct still, and I don't want to change that. But I think you're right that just sort of backing that up with a little bit of, of context and just explaining what essentially what, what Dick was saying, that yes, if you are building OAuth 2 and following best practices, that is what this document is. Um, mm -hmm. and I think that's, that could probably be clarified with a new intro paragraph to that section 12. 
Uh, yeah, I agree. I think that would be appropriate. And I think, um, you know, massaging the, the intro text to the document itself can also help. I, I, I think framing it in terms of providing context is the right way to look at it. So basically somebody picking up 2.1, um, you know, kind of knows what to expect. Well, maybe Justin, when you review the document, you could make some suggested text changes. That is an action I could take. Right. Okay. Great discussion. A any any other comments about this topic? Can we ask to see if anybody else can want to volunteer to review it? Yeah, that that's that was my follow-up question. So, anybody else? So, may, uh, that that uh, in addition to Justin, can we get one or two more people? Mike, thanks, Mike. Anybody else? Vittorio, did you sign up? <laughs> Justin is signing you up, I guess. Vittorio, still there? Oh, okay. Uh, will you be able to review the document? <laughs> thank you. Okay, awesome. Perfect. Good. Okay, thank you. Thank you, guys. That that great, great discussion. <laughs> Um, okay. Any any other uh, comments about this topic before I'm going back to Tony's question? Okay. Awesome. So, Tony, do, do you want to speak up here or? Yeah, there's an obsolete clause in the document that I read, but I'm trying to discern the difference between the. Yeah, you know, there's a difference between obsolete and, and deprecate, and so I'm trying to understand what the meaning of the obsolete was. Was it that it's um, you know, completely gone or in the deprecate case, is it still in use uh, and, and future may go away? So I'm trying to discern the, what was meant in that clause. Sure, Tony. I just took the language that was in 6749, which said that it is obsoleted the one dot Oh, that that's as that's all I that's as much thought as I put into it. Yeah, so I, yeah, that's fine. I'm just trying to understand what the intent. You know, is the intent to say, um, you know, sixty seven forty nine will still remain there until it goes away at some point in time, or is it meant that this is going to totally obsolete it, which will mean that it's no longer in practice? Which would I'm impact sure some of the implementations the... out there. So that, that's my concern. I'm not quite sure I understand the, the the process implications here, but the 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 goal, at least from from my end, is people should look at 6749 and be able to see. Oh, I don't need to read this. I should go read this other thing instead because it's a better starting point. What that what that means as far as the words to use, I'm not totally sure, but we can <laughs> yeah, hear just, um, yeah. Yeah. Hi, this, this is Roman. Let me jump in kind of with from a process perspective on, on that. Uh, so we didn't actually include the right metadata yet in the 2.1 document, but generally speaking, what obsolete means is obsolete relative to something else is that the whatever is that document that's doing the obsoleting is considered the thing that the IETF is recommending. It doesn't necessarily make any statement that the thing that preceded it is going away, but this is this document that is doing the obsoleting is the thing we're saying that you know is the is the thing that we're working on, and I dare say the thing that we're recommending. I think a really strong example of this is we have TLS version 1.3 and TLS version 1.2. Technically, 1.3 is obsoleting version 1.2, but I think no one would say that TLS 1.2 is going away. If that helps. Yeah, that, that, makes that helps. Perfect. 
So perfect uh, sense, except I don't think people understand that clarification that's right in there today. And I think people would need to understand that clarification. Yeah. Also, what, what does that mean in the context of all the other uh, documents that 2.1 pulls into? Are they all going to be obsoleted or just 67.1? Again, Roman jumping in here on top of everyone. I think that's something we would need to be very precise with, with regards to the metadata when we say what we're obsoleting, because right now only in words, we're just saying it obsoletes, but with the metadata as it relates to the RFC series, we actually have not done anything and we would need more precision there. Because likely we have to cite other documents. Who is it that spoke just prior to Roman? Yeah, yeah, this is Roman speaking. I'm um, sec area. Apologies, before that was Philip Skokan out zero. It was who? Philip, Philip. Okay, thank you. I know your voice, Roman. <laughs> uh, okay, um, Any anybody else has any comments about this? Any thoughts? So Roman, I, I think Tony had, had a question also about the difference between uh, obsolete and deprecated. Is is that is there a difference between those two, and and are they both being used in the RFC series? And again, I keep using this word metadata. It's the thing that's in the upper left hand corner on the first yeah. page. Yeah. There yeah. is no construct called deprecated. What we do have is. The, the notion of, of moving a document to historic status, but I don't think that that would at all be appropriate here because nope. historic typically means this is stuff not being used in the world. Right. And that's, I get to repeat, that's absolutely not what we're talking about here. No, no, absolutely not. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, th I think uh, Tony's point is that not many people understand that the meaning of obsolete the way you describe it, and and there will be some confusion there. So it'll be interesting to think about how to really make it clear. I I would I, I would agree with you. I mean, that's a lot of IETF RFC series arcane kind of stuff. I believe there was a suggestion, I forgot who made it kind of earlier, that we're going to need to tune the language in the abstract to make some very clear, you know, real natural language kind of statements yeah. about what is the relationship to this, to the BCP, to 2.0. And I yeah. would strongly endorse that. I yeah. think we need that level of clarity here. Yeah, good point. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Tim. But, but yeah, it, it's a bigger one, but it's, we are facing it right now. So, yeah. Okay. Any anybody else has any comments, questions about this topic? Yeah. Thanks, Tim. Anybody else? Any comments? Okay. Any other topic that you want to discuss? Okay, well, that, that was a really good uh, discussion and uh, interesting. Um, and um, I guess if no other topics to discuss, uh, I think we will uh, end it here and hope to see you all next week or uh, another uh, meeting next week. Yeah, same time, okay? I ask a question before we yeah, go, ahead. go ahead, Mike. Hold on, guys. Hold on. <laughs> Don't drop. Go ahead, Mike. Um, and maybe this was discussed in the first couple of minutes, which I missed, but Nat Sakamura submitted draft 26 of the OAuth R spec, which addressed then Kdex AD review comments. Yeah. Is this yeah. being sent back to the IESG now, or what's the status? I think it is all right. We, we did discuss this quickly. It is with IESG. It, it, would ne it was never back with the working group so uh, maybe maybe roman you wanna you wanna take it this from here oh did, did roman drop i guess he did drop so we did talk about this uh, mike now that that document is still with the isg if i remember correctly let me check it very quickly here i don't think we uh, 
pulled it into the working group back back into the working group. So it is with the ISG. Let me see. Yeah, it's 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 ISG eval evaluation. So and and Roman. Okay. Can Wait, it. Yeah. Go ahead. We probably need to wake up the ISG and say, please yeah. finish and get it on another telechat. Yeah. I, yeah. I, 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 the Paris want to do that or what? Yeah, well, Roman confirmed that he, he's aware of this and he will address this, right? Okay. Just before you join. Okay, awesome. Any Anybody else has any last minute comment? Okay, thank you all. See you next week. Thank you.